I'm really pretty excited about this lab. We get to do a titration. I've wanted to do this, uh, but you'd have to go out and buy a $50 burette, and I knew that's not going to work. But what we do is we basically just go ahead and use the droppers as the burette. So the first thing you have to do is calibrate your dropper. So get your distilled water dropper, 10 milliliter, graduated cylinder, and you want to count the number of drops in one milliliter. So drop, 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 drop. And I came out with 20. You should be close to that. If you're getting way less or way more, there's a little paper in the kit that talks to you about the, what the drop should look like, and it shows that to you. You should be getting around 20 drops per milliliter. All right, so that's the calibration. Then the next thing is to take some vinegar and just a few milliliters into the littlest beaker, and then you want to pull up with your um, graduated pipette, which goes right up to this line, one milliliter of the vinegar, and put that into the other beaker. And then I've measured nine milliliters of water. And I want to go ahead and add that, and I'm going to take the disposable pipette I mean the calibrated pipette, and mix that around. Okay, now we've diluted that by 1 to 10. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to take 1 milliliter, again using the same pipette, and put it into well plates D1 and D2. Now, since I'm only going to do this once, I won't be repeating it you would to get accuracy. I'm just going to put that into well D1. Okay, and then we take the phenol thaline. Let's say that with me together. Phenol thaline. That's one of the things you need to learn in chemistry. Phenol thaline. No, phenol thaline. Four syllables. Phenol thaline. Okay, you take about five millimeters. If it's a centimeter long, that's okay, but you can see approximately how big it is there in my finger, and I'm going to put that down in that one milliliter um, of the vinegar mixture. And I'm going to go ahead and just touch that and make sure it's down at the bottom. Okay, then to do the titration, we take our potassium hydroxide, KOH, and it is at one tenth molar, and so we're going to be using that. And we're assuming that this bottle has the same calibration as the distilled water. Okay, and that's why we want to have it around 20, because that's what these bottles are generally going to do. So, what I'm going to do is start adding the KOH and counting the drops. One, two, Three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I do know the number that I'm looking for. Okay, so I put twenty drops in, and I'm going to go ahead and stir that. And you see how the pink color disappears? Now, I'll add a few more. That's 25. Okay, now, that is what it looks like when it's gone too far. Somewhere in between where you have the pink color and it starts and it disappears and you stir it up, it's gone, then you add one more drop and the color stays. That one drop, now I knew it was somewhere in there so I went 
past it. That's what it looks like. It's not good. You want it to just have a faint pink color. You see how that looks? We look at that, it looks almost like a purplish color. Okay, so you do not want it to go that far. It should have just that pink color that was there, but it persists. It stays for 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds. Okay, so I went way past to show you what you shouldn't do. And so you've got to take it easier. I'm doing it quickly so you have more time and get it to where that color will stay. All right, now the last thing we have to do is to do our calculations. Okay, there's my 20 drops. And so if it's 20 drops per milliliter, if you invert that number, you get 0 0.05 milliliters per drop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and call it at 22 drops. I did not see that. I'm just guesstimating between the 20 and the 25. You would do more exactly. So 22 drops at 0 0.05 milliliters. What is that? Well, that comes out at 1.10 milliliters if you do the math. Now, here's where we use our concentration and figure out the concentration of the acid that we don't know because we know the concentration of the base and we know both volumes. So we use our equation. Remember the molarity of the acid, the volume of the acid, equals the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. And we have three of those numbers. What we do not know is the molarity of the acid. Okay, so the volume of the acid is one milliliter. That's how much we put into the uh, well plate. The molarity of the acid, we don't know. The molarity of the base was listed as 0 0.1 molar on the bottle. And the volume we just calculated is 1.10 milliliters. So you go through and solve that. Well, we've got a 1 here. So 1 tenth of 1.1 is 0.11 divided by 1. And yes, so the diluted acid is 0 0.11 molar. Well, we diluted it tenfold, so that means that the undiluted is ten times more concentrated. Move decimal point, 1.10 molar. That's the concentration of our vinegar. Okay, now the formula for acetic acid, HC2H3O2. We have to calculate the molar mass. So we've got two carbons at 12, that's 24. A total of four hydrogens, that's four. Two oxygens at eight, that's 16. So you add that together, and you come up with approximately, I'm just using two sig digs here, 44 grams per mole. Okay, so what do we have? I have, I want to figure out the mass, the grams of acetic acid in one liter of vinegar. Well, I know my concentration is 1.1 moles per one liter. And I know that one mole is 44 grams. So that's 48.4 grams in a liter. Okay, now I look at uh, what is the percent of that. That's 48.4 over 1,000 because there's 1,000 grams, 1,000 milliliters. Okay, times 100 to make it percent, and that will come out at 4.84%. Now, the bottle of vinegar that I had, it said... 4% acidity. So what must have happened, uh, because the, the 4.84 is higher than the 4, I must have added a little bit too much vinegar to the well plate. Okay, and that would generate an artificially high, uh, about 20% error. Uh, the other time I got about 10% error. But uh, when I practiced this before we're doing it, um, 
this is really a good lab because you get to see how a titration works. And you've got to be very careful. You want to go drop wise. One drop, stir. As a matter of fact, you have your dropper in one hand. Drop, stir, stir, stir. Ah, oh, it's gone. Drop until that last drop, the color persists, like I said, for at least 10 seconds. Uh, of stirring before it disappears and it never disappears really it just gets fainter and fainter if you go too far you can instead of scrapping it starting completely over again use your diluted vinegar pull up another milliliter when you add it it'll go clear and you'll have to add approximately the same number of drops so like I had about 20 some you need to add another 20 drops that way you won't have to completely start over again you're just doubling the amount in there. And of course, remember, that would be two milliliters for the volume of the acid and then the volume by the number of drops of the base, KOH. Okay, go ahead and have fun.